Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian. And Jinx here. And welcome to Crusader Kings 3 on the PlayStation 5. So CK3 is finally on console. It is only on the current gen console. It's not on PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One. Now I do have a good amount of experience with this game on PC. I've done three Let's Plays with it and also got about probably a few hundred hours on the game total. A lot more experience on the, the previous game, CK2. Uh, so maybe go check out one of those PC series if you want to see a full series that you can binge watch. I also did some tutorials. So if you're looking to learn how to play CK3, uh, pretty much all of the mechanics are exactly the same for the console game as they are on the PC. So those tutorials would be helpful for learning how to play the console version. The while all the mechanics are essentially the same, the UI and the controls, obviously, since it's on a, a controller, uh, are quite quite a bit different from the PC version. So we'll be looking at all that as we play this series. But that uh, tutorial series, which there's two videos to it, one just kind of teaching the overall game, while the other one focuses on uh, the military matters, uh, those tutorials would be helpful for anybody trying to learn the console version. So I will link uh, the first video in that series on the back of this video on the, the end card. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the game. We're going to be playing, so let's select uh, any ruler here, and and we're going to be playing in Spain, guys, because I've never done a Spanish campaign on the channel. Uh, we played in France, we played in England, uh, we're playing in Poland right now, we got a, a series going uh, with the new World Court expansion which none of the DLC is included right now. It does have like a, a launch DLC, which is I think it's some clothing or something like that. But the Northern Lords Viking DLC and the Royal Court DLC are not yet out. So we're doing that Polish series uh, on the PC right now. We've also played uh, Byz Byzantine series in CK3. And then uh, CK2, we did France and, and somewhere else. I don't remember where the other campaign was. Uh, I think it was a Viking one actually. Maybe over here in Sweden. I always play as Vikings. Yeah, I've always liked playing as the Vikings as well. We haven't done a, a Viking campaign yet in uh, CK3. But yeah, I think we're going to play in Spain, guys. Spain's a, a fun place to play. We have two rulers that I'm thinking about playing. These are all brothers, I believe. You've got the King of Galicia, Garcia. The King of Leon, Alfonso. And then you have King Sancho, of Castile, or, or typically pronounced Castile. I think in Spanish, that'd be Castille, right? I mean, I would think so. Because the L's are like a, either a silent or a, kind of a Y sound. So yeah, it's King Sancho II, the strong of Castille. We'll just say Castile, because whenever I say Castille on the channel, it irritates people. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like it. So these are all brothers here. So these are three Spanish characters we could play as. And then there's the ruler over here in Aragon. And then you got another, another Sancho. Yep, another Sancho. And then we got a ruler over here in Navarra. I don't think he's. No, he is related. Anso? Yeah, Anso <laughs> is related. So maybe these are four brothers. I'm not entirely sure how he's related to these other three here. Uh, and then you have. And then over here you have Aragon. He's a different dynasty. And then the rest, I believe, other than Barcelona, are all Muslims. So the Muslims control the majority of the Iberian Peninsula. So playing in Spain does often result in a very military heavy campaign. So it should be fun. Uh, but yeah, who do you think we should play as, Jinx? Sancho. You want Sancho of yes. Castile? So he's a more military focused guy. He's like brave, raffle. So if we play as him, it'd be uh, very good for, for our military. Leon though, he's a uh, intrigue focused guy. And I think he has like really high intrigue. And so that could be fun as well, like assassinating your brothers to try so and take their the titles. So he's brave, but he's sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then over here in uh, uh, Galatia, you have Garcia, which I don't know anything about him. He looks tired. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the youngest of the three. Uh, but yeah, we could do Castile if you want. I don't know. Leon has a majestic beard. He does. Now, we can change our haircuts and got a barber shop. So I wouldn't pick it just based on so the, the facial hair. Beard? You could. You could get a bigger beard if you so desired. You need to get a bigger beard than our brother. <laughs> <laughs> so which one you want, Jinx? You Sancho. Want a you want Sancho? 
I guess Leon is in between the two brothers. Yeah, he's in between the two. Uh, you don't have as wide of a border as you do with uh, Glacia here, but you do have an avenue to attack them uh, right here through the mountains. This is a very good des defensive spot as yeah. well. Unless our brothers are assholes and turn on us. True. Yeah, a lot of infighting between the Christian brothers here. And then uh, same thing here. You got a pretty good defensive location right here up in the mountains if you want to be Castile. So which one you want? Sancho, sure. All right, we'll be Sancho <laughs> then. All right, so this is Sancho of Castile. And there we go. You see that the loading on the PS5 is, is very quick, as you'd expect. Uh, overall, the game performs very well. It's not like Stellaris, guys, when Stellaris came to console, and it was super, super slow. So uh, slow. Yeah, so slow. That was our main complaint with it. That's not an issue with the console version of CK3. Now, as for the controls, they're decent. Uh, I have some issues with it, and we'll talk about that as we play. I have a couple problems that I really, really don't like. Certain things they made like almost impossible to look at, or I can't figure out how to look at them. And one of them will be titles trying to figure out which titles you have. So the key in any Paradox game is the tooltips. Uh, so one thing I've been doing, and I think you should do it as well if, if you like to play this as I do, the default setting in here for the, where's the options? For the tooltips, you have an auto tooltip delay. And I think it's set normally at like one second or something like that. So what I did is I turned it all the way down so the tooltip will pop up automatically However, I use the L3 setting to turn it on and off. So that way it pops up immediately as soon as I hit L3. And then I can put it back down. Uh, so I really like using it that way. It's much better than leaving the default setting where you got to sit over, hover, hover over it for about a, a minute and then it pops up on its own. And then it blocks your view even if you don't want it to. Uh, so I think it's better doing it this way. Just have it pop up automatically. Uh, you can also hold L3 to get access to this little tooltip uh, hand here. And then you can click on anything uh, to kind of learn about it. So kind of like hovering over it on the PC version. Now the problem here with the titles, if you, you hover over it, it just kind of explains what the titles are. What a title is. Yeah, and there doesn't seem to be any way to see which titles you have. Now if you hold L2, you get this little menu here, and there's a title thing. So you'd think that would take you to your titles. And yet, it only shows you the one title, your, your top title, which for us is the Kingdom of Castile. So yeah, I, I don't know how you find like all your titles. It's a title history. Is that just what you've been in the past? No, this is like everybody who's held that oh, title and how they got it. Yeah, I, I don't know how to like find a list of all the titles that a character has. You would think there'd be a way to do that, but I, I don't know how. So little things like that where I just can't figure out how to do certain things or where the information's not as clear. Like for instance, uh, the suggestion settings is not quite as good as it is on PC. Uh, but overall, I feel like the controls are, are pretty good for a console strategy game. Not bad at all. So I like all that. There are a few other issues I have like with the military. And we'll talk about that as we play. Uh, let's just go in and jump into it. Uh, we'll take a look at our character first. This is King Sancho II the Strong of Castile. We're 30 years old. We have no children. We're not even married yet. What? He's 30 and not married? Yep. 30 What's and not married. With him? So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess the, all the ladies were going for his, his brother, Alfonso. No, he's not he's married not, either. Nobody's <laughs> married. So, we need to find a wife. That's going to be uh, key for us so we can start having children here. Uh, we have the two brothers. So, who is he in relation to us? He's our cousin. Okay, okay, so I thought he was a cousin. Yeah, so he's a cousin. And of course, these are our two brothers over here. And we have two sisters as well. I'm not entirely sure where she's at. She's not in our court, though. And she... Oh, she looks grumpy. She has a title of her own, so she is landed. She has a county in our brother's realm. Uh, but yeah, it's really easy to kind of move back and forth between everything. These are just the L1, R1s. Uh, when you click on somebody, if you want to go back, you just hit circle. So overall, it's pretty easy to navigate things in the game. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and go through all of our screens here. Uh, one of the first things I always do is go ahead and change up our crown authority to limited crown authority. Because it's those benefits there uh, compared to what we would get here. Basically, all you're getting for the autonomous vassals 
is that they have an increase of opinion. Uh, but overall, you're not getting much. Uh, like So for here, we can take titles from people. Uh, we can get more levies and income from our vassals. So we're going to switch over to the limited crown authority. That's going to be the first thing we're going to do here. Then we need to take a look at our council. Uh, so, well, you know what, actually, let's go and arrange a marriage first. I think that should be our priority here. So let's go and find a spouse. Now, if you never played CK3 on, on PC, <laughs> you have the, the filters here, and this allows you to limit what type of characters you might want to see. This can be a lengthy process at times. It can. Yeah, this is a huge chunk of the game is sometimes just finding uh, good marriages. Uh, but yeah, this can be really handy. So, like, let's say we probably want... I mean, probably want an adult. So we can start having children soon. And we're old. You want somebody healthy. I mean, we're not that old. We're old. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, 35 in real life, guys. So we're older than this character, and I don't think we're old. I guess now, looking back at 30, I'm like, oh, that's youngish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, youngish. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's all we really need to look at here. So once you've you know limited what you might want to see here, for instance, one thing we could have done is made it so... That we're not seeing a lowborn. I want to make sure that they're nobles or whatever. I don't want any peasants. Mm -hmm. Another thing we could do is try and look for certain inheritable traits. Like good traits that would be passed down our line. So we can sort this by alliance power here. To try and get alliance with uh, the most powerful person that's available. So these are the ladies that would get us alliances. You can always select them, uh, select them here to get their character screen up get a better view of them. So you can navigate between the screens that you have up with the right directional stick. So these are our potential marriages here. And that's our most powerful one. This would be a French marriage. So we looked at... That'd be with Duke William, the bastard. So with Duke William, that's... That's one of those ones you want to wait to see if he ends up winning the war in England <laughs> or not. Because if he doesn't, then he, he often ends up becoming uh, very, very weak. Uh, if he wins, though, he'll be one of the most powerful characters in the game. Then we're going to wait this one out. Yeah, so you wouldn't want to do the marriage with him just yet. Is she old? Hmm? Is this one old? Oh, um, she's yeah, she's 40. So what we definitely need to do here is limit... Set an age cap. Yeah, maximum age here at 25. So that we don't have any of those older ladies on here. and we'll we need be, babies. Yeah, we need babies. See, so yeah, I'm not really seeing any... Uh, powerful alliances here so we might want to do you have to hold circle to close all your screens i'm not sure i like that i wish it was a little bit easier to to hold it or excuse me to close all the screens yeah we could look at uh one of our neighbors here now obviously we already can have an alliance with alfonso but yeah if we wanted to make sure we could have an alliance with navara then we could arrange a marriage for his daughter so that would be an option but then we have nowhere to expand except into the more powerful Muslim territories. Uh, but you can see we currently have a thousand men. Uh, well, you see that up at the top screen, 1,002 men. And so we would not yet be able to, to contend with the Muslims. So I think Navarra will be our first victim, guys, even though he is our cousin. Uh, so yeah, He's we'll attack him cousin, first. Though. So we don't want, we don't want a, a marriage with him in alliance. But maybe Aragon, uh, they don't have any kids either. How about over here? We want somebody Is close. There anyone we're not related to? We're related to everybody, Jinx. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna get I don't think nudies. we're. I don't think we're related to this guy here. Uh, I think he's got. Is that a boy? Yeah, it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> he's got some daughters here, uh, but they're kind of young, so we'd have to wait a while uh, before we actually had the marriage until they're sixteen. Uh, but we would get the alliance now if that's what we're looking to do here. So we get to have an ally here in Barcelona, which he's decently powerful for the Spanish uh, monarchs here. Or we could go here, somewhere with one of these uh, dukes or counts in southern France. We play this game very differently, you and I. <laughs> <laughs> what do you base off your, your marriages off of? Um, well, like looks. <laughs> <laughs> We could also just go with we a trait. for love and, yeah, traits mostly. But I feel like, you know, because we haven't had any kids yet, uh, but, yeah, I really feel like we need an alliance. 
just in case we get attacked by like yes, alliances are yeah. important. How strong is this guy? We could probably beat him with an without alliance if you'd rather go for like a trait and get some good traits. Let's see if there's any available, guys. But again, this is a kind of lengthy process. I mean, it's your your spouse. It's important. She could murder you in your sleep. Mm-hmm. So those are the possible inheritable traits. There's really not very many, guys. So with her, you have the quick trait. So that's an intelligence trait. It's the lowest ranking one. So, I mean, she's, she's kind of smart. Yeah, she's kind of smart. So you might be able to pass that down to your children. And then she's like one of the beauty traits here. So she's comely, which is the lowest level of the beauty traits. So there's nobody really good when it comes to traits. So I think we should just do the marriage for the alliance over here, guys. If he'll even accept, he might not. So we'll do his oldest child, I think. She's three years younger. Also, it looks like she has some some negatives here. She's a stutter. She's oh. wrathful and she's bossy. How do you pick a marriage when it's a bratty little kid? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's difficult. And these are all sons here. It's hard to tell uh, on the, the console version. Everything's so tiny. Yeah, it is. Part of it's because you're just further from the TV, I and suppose. very blind. Uh, she's paranoid and bossy. But yeah, I guess we'll do it with her. All little girls are bossy. Uh, so let's go and arrange the marriage for ourselves. Uh, obviously, we're 20 years older, but this is CK3. This is not even close to the worst thing we're going to do in this game, guys. We're going to do all kinds of horrible things. This will really make you feel like a horrible person, this game, if you've never played it before. It doesn't make me feel like a horrible person. It'd be like murdering babies and stuff. <laughs> if you've got a reason to do it. <laughs> all right, so one of the first things you want to do, guys, is your archbishop. Uh, he controls all the church lands in your realm, and thus he's the one who gives you the money and levies from those lands, but he'll only give it to you if he likes you. He has to have an opinion of at least one, and then even then he only gives you uh, a certain amount until his opinion gets up to, I believe, 50. Uh, so you can see here we hover over this that the realm priest does not endorse us uh, so we want to fix that and so we're gonna use this square to select the different character action uh, actions here and then we're gonna sway them and these are the personal schemes uh, until you get certain perks you can only have one personal scheme going at a time uh, on top of the personal scheme you also have the hostile schemes so like assassinating characters, trying to kidnap somebody or something like that. Uh, so we can try and kill somebody if we wanted to. Uh, for instance, our two brothers, we are the heir to both of their their lands because we're the eldest. It would be unfortunate for something to happen to either of them. So yeah, if one of them were to die, then we'd get possession of their lands. Oh no. <laughs> so the problem with Leon here is that Alfonso has... A very high intrigue. Uh, now, if we were to play as Alfonso, we could have probably taken out both these brothers fairly easily. So does he not like you? No, he does not. Oh, no. Uh, he doesn't like us because we're rivals, actually. I was not aware of that. Okay, so we are rivals with our brother. So you need to get a good spy master. <laughs> yeah, because he might try and take us out here. Well, nobody likes us. We're rivals with both of our brothers, apparently. Or Sancho the Unlikable. <laughs> We're rivals with a lot of different people here, aren't we? we got three rivals. Essentially, everybody, all the uh, the rulers here are rivals with us. We're also rivals with Norara. I think it's really just a battle of the beards. That's what it is, Jinx. I wonder if he'd be willing to... Uh, probably not, because we're rivals. So we can't ally with them. That's what I was intending to do, to secure the western flank. That's not going to work. All right, so what we're going to do, guys, is let's try and take out this guy, because look at his intrigue. It's zero. <laughs> so I feel like... Well, look at him. He, he's not even there. I feel like we can assassinate him, guys. 47% chance of success, which is not very high. But an agent will automatically join, which will increase that. Uh, so to access these little alerts down here, you have to hold R1, L1, and then press square to get rid of them. And so when we go in intrigue here, You'll see that we uh, already have one agent involved. We have a 47% chance of success, a 62% chance that it will remain a secret, and then six years before it's completed. Uh, we can also see That's if anybody... Yeah, we'd want to uh, improve that. 
Uh, another thing we can do here is try and get more agents involved in this. By bribing them with money. So we pay her 55 gold, she'll join it. And so that's what we're going to do. And see if she'll uh, increase the, the chances of success there. Alright, so now with our council, uh, we're already trying to improve the Archbishop's opinion. By pressing square, you can change what job they're doing. We already have all of our province already uh, Christian, so we can't convert anybody. We'll probably just have them do the religious relations, which improves your opinion with any uh, clergy. You can also fabricate claims. We don't think that'll be necessary right now. Because I believe we should already have claims. Could be wrong. Yeah, we have 18 claims. So I think we can... We can likely just attack anybody we want. Yeah, we have claims on just about everything, I think. So yeah, no problems there. I believe we have claims on all our, our brothers and our cousin's territory. So we don't have to do that. Now, our chancellor is absolutely terrible. Good God. Now, you'll notice the little fist on the character. That tells you that this character is a powerful noble, and uh, he wants a position on the council. If you don't give him a position, then they get angry at you. And they'll fist you. Yeah, they'll fist you, Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the fist means. They'll sneak up behind you and fist you. That's not nice. It's not. Now, you'll notice that we have a red fist here. So that's somebody's trying to fist us right now. Uh, he's uh, angry because he doesn't have a position on the council. Because as a king, you have five powerful vassals and uh, only four slots for him, uh, spots for him. So basically, there's always going to be one guy who's angry at you. Now, this guy is just a mayor. He's somebody we could easily piss off. So we'll probably want to replace him. Uh, the steward here, I mean, none of our guys are really all that good, honestly. Yeah, everybody's pretty cruddy. <laughs> He would make a good steward. So we're going to switch him out. Now, if you fire a character, then it pisses him off. So it's best to switch him out. So when you do the replace, you just find the character you want. And then swap. And then he'll move to the steward position. And the other character will move to marshal. Obviously, he's a terrible marshal. And they won't get all cranky yet. Yeah. Yeah, there's no opinion uh, change from just swapping them out. So what we'd probably want to do is put this guy as the uh as the chancellor and then this guy here could be the uh the spy master and then we can get a different marshal and nobody will expect the grandpa <laughs> or we could try and get a really good spy master that'd be an option as well to try and complete these missions a little bit faster so let's go and switch this mare out obviously he's gonna get pissed off still learning the buttons guys i only played for a couple hours so do keep that in mind. All right, so let's go and swap out this guy here. And then we just have this cruddy dude here as our marshal that we might want to uh, get rid of. He's the only guy who likes you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's the only one we have a, a positive opinion with. But look at this guy. He's our best friend. He's one of our knights here, and he has a fantastic uh, marshal ability. So we're going to replace him, fire this guy. You'll see we're going to really piss this count off. Well, at least he kind of liked us in the beginning, <laughs> so you don't get that many negative points with them. And then we're going to put this woman in place as our spy master because she would do an excellent job at it. I must always have a female spy master. <laughs> Alright, so we done a great job pissing off all our powerful vassals. Nice. So I imagine we're going to have some faction issues. Is there anything else we need to do before we actually let the game play here? I don't think so. I think we're good to go. We could uh, search for a physician. We do need one. I don't know what we're going to have the money for it since I just spent money on an agent. So you let the game play with the touchpad, and it's also how you change the speed of the game. Excellent. All right, so he accepted the betrothal, and that agent also joined our scheme. So we can take a look and see what our percentages are. We're now 70% chance of success, 85% chance of secrecy. All right. Yeah, you can slow it down and speed it up uh, by just swiping your hands on the touchpad. Uh, another thing we need to be taking a look at here is all of our suggestions. This is really helpful in CK3. It tells you uh, everything you need to know, any kind of alerts that are important. So like if you can create a title, like these duchy titles, that does cost money though. Uh, if like you have powerful vassals who expect positions, we have all these powerful vassals we kicked out of our court so they're <laughs> <laughs> unhappy with us. Let me just take a look and see if there's anybody we didn't know about. How about 
this guy here. Yeah, they're all cruddy. And they're mayors, so they're not very powerful. Because we're not very powerful. Uh, we have an alliance we can negotiate. Uh, who's this guy? He's a, a cousin. Oh, that's a Navara. He's an evil craven. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we can trust him. <laughs> yeah, we'll... Yeah, we won't. We won't allow it. Of course it he'll accept. <laughs> we'll only uh, let you know of this if they're willing to accept it. This shows us uh, all the places we're set to inherit. Or actually, it's this one right here. So you see we're first in line to inherit a lot of titles. Just one heartbeat away <laughs> from becoming considerably more powerful, guys. We did have a faction created against us, not surprising. It only has one member right now, which is that Count. So if that gets too powerful, then they'll rebel against us. Uh, we're not very powerful ourselves, so it is a concern. we got to keep our eye on that. Yeah, let's just go and let it play some as we uh, slowly work on this hostile scheme to assassinate our brother. Now, you'll notice that the percentage just increased, which is really good. Another thing we can do here, because you can see right now, it's going to be 12 months to complete. With our council here, I never did change up the schemes. What we'll want to do is have our spy master support the scheme, and then I'll increase the uh, uh, the, the chance of success and also reduce the amount of time it takes. So I also didn't look at our marshal. We can have him do two different things, organize levies or train commanders. Training the commanders would uh, probably best because it would reduce the cost of our men in arms maintenance, so it would get us some money. So we're going to do that one for right now. And then with our chancellor, we have him working on foreign affairs, which improves the opinion with foreign rulers. It'd be better to improve opinion with domestic vassals. So we'll change him over to that. And then we have our steward collecting taxes. It's probably better to have him increase development in our capital. If that is where we actually want to keep our capital, I assume. We'll keep it there for now. So the current development of the capital is 10. And that number, basically you just want it as high as possible. That controls how many levies and taxes you get from it. So we want to increase that. Uh, these are all our buildings and stuff. So we'll want to construct some. Eventually. Eventually. We have some coins. Yeah. We're kind of broke right now. But yeah, it's a, it's a really fun game. And as I said, it's it's uh, a really good ad adaptation, I think. I think they did a good job with the controls. Just certain things that aren't easy to do. Or s certain things you just can't get access to. And I'll show you guys once we start a war. Okay. Something we don't really need to know. Well, it's exciting to see this genre kind of sort of expand into the consoles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we're starting to see more and more uh, different genres that we typically associate with PC come into console, which has been uh, exciting for those of you who don't have access to a PC or, or a PC that's not good enough to play these type of games. So because we have our marshal doing this task and our marshal is really, really good, uh, their, their skill rating affects how successful they are at that mission. And uh, because he's so good, he increased the martial ability of one of our commanders. So that's one bonus. He trained him. Yeah. Uh, another thing we could take a look at here is our knights. So we currently have seven possible knights. And uh, that's our lowest ranking one. He has a prowess of eight, so he's not very good. So we might want to use an exploit. Or actually, we could recruit this guy if we have enough money. Oh, well, we do. All right, so we'll recruit, recruit him. He was a guest in our court. And uh, now we have better better knights. And he likes you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we hired him. We gave him money. Still pretty cruddy knights, though. So there's this exploit that I don't typically use on PC, but I kind of wanted to show it here for the console version, uh, where if you have any ladies in your court, so we're going to look to see if we do. We do. We have one right here, courtier, female courtier. We have a couple of them, actually. If you have any ladies in your court, then what you can do, if they're not married, which you can see that she is currently married, so we're looking for an unmarried woman here, such as her. Uh, she's 35 years old. She doesn't look like she wants to be married. <laughs> no, probably not. And she's also sadistic oh. <laughs> and arrogant, so I feel sorry for whoever... Nobody wants to marry her. <laughs> whoever we marry her off to. 
So what you can do, uh, the difference between arranged marriage and fine spouse, by the way, guys, is arranged marriage is arranging that marriage for a character in your court. Uh, while fine spouse is obviously what we did with our own character, looking across all the different realms. And so what we're looking for here, guys, we're going to have all maximum ages. We don't care about inheritable traits. We do want him healthy. Does he need to be fertile? <laughs> we'll just leave that one. That's fine. Uh, but we don't care if it's lowborn or not. The character is lowborn or not. So what we're looking for here, guys, is a good knight. Oh, I see. So it's an exploit, and they have to be willing to do a matrilineal marriage. So that means that you know, like the woman's the dominant member of the uh, of the marriage, where she, you know the kids will be of her dynasty, and the man will move to her court. And so we sort this by prowess. And then these are the best characters that we could potentially arrange a marriage for. And it includes people in our own realm. So you can see our marshal's not currently married. So we actually need to fix that. We need to get a marriage for him. Let's get Bjorn Wolf. So yeah, if we looked at him, you can see he's got a, a marshal of 22. And he's willing to marry this woman. Uh, he's also an Anglo-Saxon. So he's probably over there in England. I think he's in the... Yeah, he's in King Harold's court. So yeah. He's like, I will marry your winch. <laughs> He's willing to marry our winch. <laughs> I think she is a noble woman, isn't she? If I'm not mistaken, she's a noble and he's a lowborn. So this is kind of a move up for him, I think. <laughs> Maybe he's just what she needs. I don't know that she is, though. I can't tell because you can't move the uh, the screens in this one like you can in the, the PC version. But yeah, he'll uh, do this marriage. It's matrilineal, so he'll move to our court. And she is uh, she is a noble, by the way. I think he could take her abuse. Yeah, I think so too. So that's an exploit you can do. I typically don't use it because it results in you getting like a super powerful group of knights. I mean, I arrange marriages for everyone to bring like the mm -hmm. bestest people in. So yeah, now we have... Is uh, that really an exploit though? I mean, <laughs> kind of. Because it's, it's again, it, it results in you have like stupidly powerful knights. Uh, so like if you looked at our knights now... He's like our, what, second best guy? Yeah, he's our second best guy here. And you can see how we could use that with all of our female courtiers yeah. to essentially get rid of all our cruddy knights, or at least, you know, move them down so far that they won't, they won't serve us anymore. So yeah, you can keep doing that uh, for really powerful knights if you want to. Uh, but we do need to... I still don't know all the buttons, guys, so do forgive me. We do need to arrange a marriage for our martial and best friend here. We can't leave him without a wife. Let's find him a spouse, and what we're looking for, I would like to see if there's anybody with inheritable traits first. We already kind of looked at this for ourselves. I'd really like to find like a giant or somebody who <laughs> has like the hell traits. There's a lot more characters now. I want to say... You had to play it. You had to play a little bit to let them pop up. Yeah. I think that's what happened. So we might have been able to arrange marriages for somebody a little bit better. But yeah, somebody like her... She has that, that hell trait, which is uh, Amazonian, so it increases prowess by eight. So you can make like a dynasty of like super good knights or something like that. That's what I'm thinking. Just kind of sort this by prowess. And yeah, she's easily going to be the best one. So let's arrange the marriage for him and her. Send that proposal off. Is he into that kind of thing? <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll find out. We'll see how they like each other. If he's not, then they won't have any kids. Uh, we got a trained healer over here. Well, that's interesting. Because we actually need a, uh, a physician physician here. So let's going to get rid of that. And I think she would make a fantastic physician. She has good learning. She has the renowned physician trait, which is level three of this. So I think she would be fantastic here. She's also craven, which means she's probably too scared to do anything bad to us. <laughs> so all good things here, guys. All right, so it looks like it'll take 40 gold to recruit her. So we're going to have to wait till we get past one more month here. Basically getting to... As soon as you recruit her, she's going to die. How old is she? 57. <laughs> She'll actually probably live a while. I think we'll be okay. Bring her in. And, you know, you bring in these older folks, and they've uh, got the experience. She's a witch of the wild. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and recruit her to court. Although it's still... 40. oh. We didn't get the money. Yeah, I know. I thought that we would have got the money here, 
beginning of August. Here we go. It seems that King Garcia has tightened his security at court, hoping to track down traitor schemers. My fellow plotter, Duke Nuno, is concerned that he might have attracted some unwanted suspicion. So this is a bug that has been present in the PC version of the game since it launched and still hasn't been fixed. And apparently it's in the console version too. You notice his outfit? Where it looks like that's not supposed to look like that. The one on the right? No, the guy on the left here. Oh. That weird outfit that oh. he's. His blankie? Yeah, his blankie. Essentially, he's got a blanket on him. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that's a book. And oh, is it? Yeah, that's not and how his. He ain't got no clothes. That's not how his outfit's supposed to look. Uh, but yeah, that bug is uh, apparently present in the console version. So this has to do with our assassination attempt, I believe. So we can say, I trust Nuno's abilities. And then this will... Maybe it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Murder King Garcia is part of it. So we can say, I trust Nuno's abilities. It's an intrigue challenge. 40% 48% chance that he'll remain in, undetected and increase his intrigue by one. Or 51% chance that he'll be discovered. That's far too risky. So yeah, we're just going to say his trail, to me, needs to end now. And then he'll no longer be a part of the plot, which means it's going to reduce him. our chance of success. He tripped on his blinky. <laughs> Yeah, he tripped on the blankie. So now we have a, a very low chance of success here, so this is a problem. Oops. So we need to figure out how we can increase that. Were you going to hire that lady while you had the money? No, we're going to have to hire an agent oh. if we can. You never have enough money in CK3. It looks like we don't have enough to hire anybody. But yeah, because we lost that agent, that was big. But having the plot revealed would have been worse, guys. Because then we wouldn't have been able to do it at all. So at least with this, we might be able to keep it going. Unhealthy relations. You want to read this, Jinx? The entourage of my cousin, King Anso, stopped some way away from Burgos. Before I have time to send out an envoy, something is launched from their camp towards my castle. A mangled body, ravaged by disease, falls from the sky. Skin marred by rashes and bumps that can be seen even from where I am standing. It lands with a squelch, spreading blood, intestines, and panic. So it seems like all the bugs from the vanilla game <laughs> are in this version as well. So this event uh, used to fire like all the time. So everybody was flinging bodies at their rivals <laughs> like constantly. And, uh, as you would. Yeah. <laughs> and so they ended up reducing the chance of it firing. And now you almost never see it. In my current campaign, we haven't seen this event not one time. Uh, but yeah, we used to see it probably once every few years. Somebody would be flinging a body at us. And it looks like it's still present because we're like a year into the game and already is fired. So yeah, clearly the bug is still in here in this version of the game anyway. So we can scoop him up and we'll launch the body right back <laughs> at King Anso. Uh, and then he'll become our nemesis rather than just our rival. He did it first. Uh, we can say this body should be studied and then we'll get the studying corpses for five years, which... The only way to see what these do is by using this special tooltip mode, guys. But it's going to stress you out. Increases learning by two, but because we're brave and raffle, we're going to gain a lot of stress, so probably not going to do that, guys. Or we can say he will have a dignified burial, and we'll gain piety. So clearly we should Wait do this one. Yeah, we'll scoop him up and fling him back, guys. So that could result in disease spreading into our court. Again, it's kind of a negative event to fire. And yeah, it, it used to fire all the time. I'm expecting it to happen uh, quite a few times in this campaign. So uninvited. One of my agents has acquired a deadly spider. Okay, so this is the assassination attempt. So we probably don't want to do this yet. Because we only have a 39% chance of being successful. Which is not very good. So basically he'll probably squash the spider or something. Aww. So let's just say this is not the way to do it. And we will wait. Yeah, but it's not like someone put that spider there. It's just a spider. These things happen. <laughs> These things happen. So you can see our, our uh, marshal is doing a fantastic job increasing the marshal of all of our commanders. Because, again, he just has such a high marshal ability. He's such a likable guy. Mm -hmm. He's married now and super happy. Uh, so we need to see... If there's any other agents we can bring in, because yeah, the, the current chance of success is just far too low. So now that we have a bit of money, we can bribe this character, 55 gold. Uh, before we do this, let's make sure we're still set to inherit. If he's gotten married and had kids so far, which he has gotten married, she's not pregnant yet. But once he has a child, then we will not be the primary heir. 
So we got to get this thing going. Yeah, we need to get these spiders going. Otherwise, there's going to have to be some baby killing. Yeah, or there'll be some baby killing. <laughs> it's for the children. Which babies are easier to kill, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, they are. You just lead them out in the middle of the forest and then they die usually. And then dwarves pick them up and take care of them. Yeah. All right, so we're going to bring this guy into our scheme. Now, the longer we have the scheme going, the more likely it will get discovered. So, yeah, we're definitely risking things right now. Yeah, because people run their mouths. So 61% chance of success, so we're still pretty low, guys. In, in paradox terms, 61% might as well be 5%. <laughs> You're almost guaranteed to fail. So, yeah, we're going to want to uh, get that higher if we can. Uh, but the problem is money. This is getting pretty expensive. And time. Because eventually, you would think he would get her knocked up. Has our other brother had any children yet? Oh, and here's the assassination attempt. So this time we'd lead him out into the woods for some bandits to get him. But again, it's only a 61% chance. So I think we should probably delay it one more time. Okay. Yeah, let's just hope he doesn't discover it. Uh, so far, he's betrothed himself to a younger girl here. She's 15, so they can't even have kids yet. And we got some notifications over here. So one of our knights became a blade master, which uh, is a trait, like branch of traits here, increasing their prowess, making them better knights for you. So that's really good. Again, this is all because of our uh, really good marshal. And then efficient county taxes, we gained 50 gold, nice. and this is because of a really good steward. So it's, it's pretty important to have good council members. Like, you want to keep your powerful vassals at peace so they don't join factions against you, which you can see we're actually about to have a rebellion here. Yeah, we have two counts that are angry. Old men are also easy to kill. <laughs> <laughs> and they are more powerful than we are. Together. So, they could send an ultimatum. But we might just accept it because I have lower crown authority. Obviously not a good thing, but yeah, we're kind of in a bad position here. But if we can get this thing done here, then we're going to greatly increase our own power. Uh, so let's try another bribe here. 55 gold, and that might be enough to get it done. And we still should have some money left. Maybe we can spend it on men at arms. Oh, there it is. So that's the demand, guys. So if we accept, then it will lose 20 dread. It'll change us back to the autonomous vassals, which is obviously a negative thing. Or we can uh, start a faction war, which would be difficult to win because we have no men in arms. And, uh, you know, we don't have a very large army. Uh, they have more troops than we do. Now, this is one of my complaints with the console version. Uh, a big complaint for me is the fact that when you have the events up, you can't access anything else. So, like, on the PC version right now, I would want to check to see what kind of troops these these guys have like are they all levies do they have men in arms can i can i beat them in this war uh but here in the console version you can't do any of that we're just stuck like this with making uninformed decisions uh so like another example is i had uh, an event that was involving one of my knights before uh, when i was doing my little test playthrough and my wife wanted him fired but i didn't know if he was a good knight or not because there's no way for me to see his prowess like you can click on characters sometimes in these events you can't do it in this one but uh it doesn't show the prowess what does the l2 on the left do the l2 well you can't do it now oh. but that's the access that uh oh, kind of radial menu gotcha. hmm yeah i really don't want to fight a, a rebellion just yet i don't think we're ready for it so we're probably gonna have to let them win this guys it's unfortunate we can always change it back though we'll lose some prestige but that's okay. I think that our choice to kick both of these two counts out of the uh, uh, out of the court, out of the council, is why we have this. So, you know, it's a negative. Uh, but once we get this done here, which we're at an 82% chance of success, once we get this done, we'll be much more powerful and we won't have to uh, accept the demands of our vassals anymore. Uh, we were able to sway him. That right there is going to make us more powerful. Oh, nice. As now we get more of his levies and more of his money. Wonder what it was that swayed him. Our beard? Our goatee, maybe? <laughs> Did you let him our, touch it? Our magical eyes. 
Uh, we got this other. this other agent in here. And that faction, of course, disbanded because we gave them what they wanted. So that was in here, the first thing that we did, guys. That reduced the Crown Authority back down to level 1. So, it is what it is. We won't be able to increase it anytime soon. It's going to be uh, till 1086. We're stuck for 20 years like this. But we will remember. We will remember. All right, so we're going to try it now, guys. 82% chance of success. My agents have scheduled a journey for King Garcia, which will take them through Dark Woods. All that is missing is a band of thugs that will tragically slay them in a highway robbery gone wrong. I can already imagine blood seeping into the dark soil. So we're going to... We're going to do this 82% chance of success. Let's hope that it succeeds. And it did. All right, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thanks to my brilliant plan and my hired thugs, King Garcia is finally dead. As a travel party stopped to camp for the evening, bandits poured out from among the trees, calling for blood and gold. The soldiers fought back, but thankfully it was not enough. King Garcia was tragically slain in the melee. The bandits are now hunted by all, and no one even suspects my involvement. So... We have drastically increased our own power, uh, gained all this territory over here. So now we completely surround Leon. They gotta be happy about that. And uh, we're now easily the most powerful of the Spanish rulers here. And thus, we are now the cultural head. Something we haven't looked at yet. I guess we haven't selected a lifestyle yet. My bad, guys. Yeah, we should have done that a long time ago. I just completely forgot to do it. That should have been done already. We could have been gaining experience in this. And we could have increased our abilities as well. Uh, so yeah, we want to go with the martial one. This is based off of your education trait. Uh, so, oops, I mean to close that. So the amount of experience you get is based on how good your education trait is. You can do any of these, but it's best to do the one that's going to get you the most experience and perks the fastest. So then you pick one of the three lifestyle focuses. These will control the, the bonuses you get, which you can see here. Strategy is going to give us 3 plus martial. Authority gives us 1 plus martial and uh, plus 20% dread. And we'll get control faster in the in our counties. And then chivalry gives us prowess. Attraction opinion, so the ladies like us more. <laughs> and then plus 5 advantage, which gives you uh, bonuses in combat. So you get these bonuses, and then plus there's events tied to each one of these lifestyles. So you know what events you'll get uh, based on which one you pick here. So I think we should probably go with, just based on how we're playing so far, either strategy authority. I don't know that we're all that chivalric. I think we're going to go with the strategy focus. Now, these do not affect the perk trees at all, guys. Uh, so you can still be a ladies man? Yeah, you can get any of these ones. Uh, we're already going down this one. We can reset our perks uh, by holding the square. Uh, that does result in you getting like a ton of stress, though. I don't know if it'll tell us. Yeah, 125 oh. stress. It's a you lot of stress. Just changed your whole life. Yeah. So what we're currently getting here, uh, the CB costs are reduced, so we can declare war for cheaper. Uh, Parthian tactics is going to improve our cavalry and our skirmishers. We got envelopment, so our men in arms counter better. Yeah, and if you're wondering what all this kind of stuff is, guys, go take a look at that uh, tutorial I did uh, for the PC version. Then we got organized march. This is going to increase our speed and our screening. And then hit and run, decrease the, the losses we take when we retreat, and increasing toughness and damage to some of our units. Letters are so tiny. I was like, why does it keep saying pork? <laughs> pork? <laughs> Where? You need to choose a pork. <laughs> oh, instead of a perk. All right, so we would have probably have already gotten a perk if I would have been uh, if I would have been doing that this whole time. That was my bad, guys. I didn't think about it. But yeah, you want to do that as soon as you get a new character. You want to get the uh, the lifestyle selected. Uh, I don't know if we have any decisions available that are important. Looks like that's a no. Uh, we got a ton of money. Oh, we just inherited walking around. Uh, wars and stuff. Are they battling? Yeah. We got some wars going on. Uh, it looks like he has a rebellion right here. Yeah, he's got a rebellion right there. So uh, we have all the money that we inherited from our brother. And so what we need to do here, uh, also, we have too many holdings. Again, the whole alert system is just... You know, maybe it was in the alerts here rather than the suggestions. Yeah. Uh, in the, the PC version of the game, these pop up at the top of the screen so you can easily see them and it alerts you to stuff that you really need to take care of. Like, for instance, in this case, we're above our domain limit, so we need to hand out a county to somebody or increase our uh, domain limit, which you can do by increasing your stewardship. And then also, we have an available dynasty legacy. 
Uh, so we need to get something selected here. So these are all the different options. Dynasty legacies are gained by increasing your renown. And each one in this branch here gets more expensive as you go. So we can see what they do. Uh, House of Warriors is going to increase prowess and knight effectiveness. Which, by the way, this impacts your entire dynasty. So every character that's of your dynasty. So our brother is going to get these bonuses too. Oh. We select it because we're now the head of the dynasty. Uh, mostly fair, increasing popular opinion. This is the law branch. So our brother who's our enemy will get him? Yeah, he'll get him too. Yeah, because he's from our dynasty. Uh, so then we have the Guile branch, increasing dread gain. We have the Blood branch. This is all for, like, uh, traits. Makes it a lot easier to get good traits. Mm -hmm. Just overall for uh, helping to breed really good characters. Then we have the Vibrant Court. That increase the opinion of courtiers and guests. And better guests will be attracted. Uh, Desirable Match. This is the Glory branch. Uh, be more likely to accept our marriage proposals. And then we have Bounteous Loins, <laughs> which is going to increase our fertility. So which one do you want to go for? I feel like because we're playing in Spain, we should go for the Warfare branch. What do you think, Jinx? I mean, you don't want to know what I think. Jinx. I'm all about the loins. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx is all about the loins. One want them Bounteous Loins. But we should probably focus on Warfare since this peninsula is getting crowded. <laughs> yeah, we'll go for this one, guys. Remember, that will also impact our brothers. And I think our cousin, too, if he's in the same dynasty. So we have uh, an extra county. Therefore, we're going to have to get rid of one of these. Probably going to want to get rid of the worst one. Now, I want to say we probably have full control on all these. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, yeah, we just want to get rid of whatever the worst one is. And as far as development goes, they're all pretty similar. We got eight development over there. And... 10 over here in his former capital of Santiago. So definitely don't want to give that one out. Even though it's actually generating less money. Probably due to buildings. Now you'll notice that this one says it's not giving us hardly anything. That is because, we, because we're over the holding limit. One of our holdings won't give us anything. And this is the one they chose to not give us anything. Uh, so the way we'll have to look at it. We've already seen that the development. Because it's got to be one of these two areas. If we're going to keep this as our capital. Uh, these were all in our capital duchy. So therefore, we're going to want to keep both of these two counties over here, guys, because they'll be the easiest to ensure that we uh, inherit those with our primary heir. And so therefore, we're going to want to get rid of one of these two here. And so they're the same development. So the only thing to really base it off of would be the, uh, the buildings. So we want to take a look at what's in here. Uh, we have a hunter's lodge, and we have the pastures. So we're getting like 0.4 per month uh, gold from these buildings. 50 levies, uh, defender advantage, so if you know, we're defending this location, it'll give us uh, some bonus in combat. And we're increasing our light cav, their damage and their pursuit. Well, here, this is just granting the 0.5 gold per month. So this one gets more money, but less bonuses overall. Well, this one is the capital of the duchy, so you can get like a special duchy building. So probably want to keep that. I was thinking Santiago was the... Oh, they have a special building. Okay, so we can make the Grand Cathedral here. All right, so in that case, you definitely want to get rid of this one down here, guys. All right, so we're going to hand that out to somebody unless we can increase our uh, administration somehow. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be anything we can do until our wife is old enough. She's 13, so we would have to wait a few years. I mean, we wouldn't get any bonus from keeping it, so might as well give it out, guys. So we're going to want to find, like, maybe a knight or something who would serve us well. So let's take a look at our military. Take a look at our knights and see if there's anybody we might want to give it to. I suppose we can give it to him. Does he have any? Oh, he doesn't have any uh, titles yet. So let's give it to him. Well, come on, bestie. All right, so we're going to get him selected. We're going to select to grant titles. And this is going to be impossible without closing some of these screens so can you not do it through the map here we go <laughs> all right so we want to do it this way there we go so we're going to grant him this title here and now he's a count and he absolutely he loves us loves you. Mm -hmm. so we have a loyal count over here he and his wife would be a little happier too i'm hoping he'll become a powerful noble she really doesn't like us 
Yeah, she can't well, stand you us. We just gave you land. We gave her husband land. Well, I mean, yeah, but she gets to live on it. Now, on the default settings, which we didn't take a look at that when we started the game, because we're just on completely default settings right now. Uh, but yeah, on the, the default settings, you can't give territory to ladies until you like change up your... You'd have to change your religion or something like that. So can people just walk all over everyone's land? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because that's not sus at all. <laughs> yeah, they can march through your lands without any issues. Uh, we have some tourney troubles. You want to read this, Shinx? As king, I have been obliged to attend a local jousting tournament, but the contestants have been delayed. The tourney won't start for at least another hour. Looking around, I notice my friend Count Rodrigo sitting under a nearby pavilion, clearly bored halfway to death. On the other hand, I just notice a merchant dropping off a cart of expensive champagne. Alright, so we can spend some time with Rodrigo under the pavilion, and he'll become our best friend Aww. rather than just our friend. We can say a good drink always improves my mood, will reduce some of our stress, and uh, gain the drunkard trait, <laughs> or 10% chance we'll gain the drunkard trait. Or you say I waste enough to, enough time on this disaster and just reduce some stress. Uh, let's hang out with our bestie. So we'll make him a best friend now. All right, so he's our best friend, which improves his opinion further. So like if we wanted to look at him here, our best friend, and then we uh, see it's getting a plus 120 to his opinion because of being our best friend. He's still not well, a powerful she vassal likes though. You a little better. One point. One point better. <laughs> I don't think they're impacted at all. I could be wrong. But the opinion of their husband, I don't think that impacts. But yeah, you see, her opinion is not at all affected by her husband's opinion of us. Can you give her a present? Did she already get pregnant? She's already pregnant. Oh. They wasted no time. <laughs> yeah, we could give her money if we wanted well, to. Well, they got a new house. So let's go and start spending some money, guys. The first thing we need to do is improve our army uh, because we don't have any men in arms yet. Uh, we do have a unique e uh, unit here, the Caballeros, which is a unique light cavalry unit. I'm not sure the difference between that and the, the regular one, but typically the, the unique units are always better. We could compare them. So they have 31, 26, so st same attack and defense. So it looks like there's two primary differences here. So with the light horsemen, you're going to have a much better pursuit, which means they'll kill more troops while you know chasing down a retreating army. But the Caballeros has a much better screening. And so when you're retreating, you'll lose less casualties. Uh, and then the other primary benefit here is the, uh, the hills. So light horsemen get a penalty while fighting in hills, while Caballeros actually get a bonus while fighting in hills. Because they're crazy, man. Mm -hmm. And it says that right there as well. Iberian Caballeros are at home both on flat plains and in rough hilly terrain. And so, they're fun to party with. So that's the main benefit here. Uh, they're very expensive though, uh, so if we wanted to get them, now would be the time when we're sitting on a ton of money. Uh, also, another thing we need to take a look at is our innovations, since we are now the cultural head. So yeah, we can get these guys, I suppose, since they're a unique unit. So we'll buy that, and then maybe we want to look at who or what units our, our allies, or excuse me, our, our uh, enemies have. So we can kind of determine what we want to counter them with. So he doesn't currently have anything, but he does have an ally here that has armored horsemen. And then Leon, who has a lot more troops, he doesn't have anything either, just the men in arms. So he hasn't had enough money to, to make any men in arms just yet. Or he has just the levies, excuse me. All right, so we'll go ahead and get some I'm not entirely sure what they'll get, so we can't really counter just yet. I was thinking some bowmen to, to counter skirmishers. Or we can go ahead and get something to speed up the uh, sieges. Let's do that. Let's uh, speed up the sieges. And this is the best one to get in that case. So we'll get those. So we'll build a siege faster. Uh, has he had a son yet? He has not. I wonder what our chance of assassinating him would be. Probably fairly low. Actually, it's not too bad. Apparently, there's two agents willing to join right away. <laughs> People don't like him. So let's start this scheme and see if we can't take his lands peacefully as well. Or, you know, he if you consider <laughs> assassinations peaceful. So we'll do that. And then the other thing we need to take a look at here that we haven't done just yet is innovations. So we are now the cultural head. When we started the game, we were not. The cultural head gets to pick which one of these innovations, which are kind of like technologies, 
uh, that we can get. And they are based on your, your culture. So which ones you have unlocked, uh, which ones you have available are uh, based on your culture. And so these are the unique ones down here at the bottom. And so that gives us access to, uh, so we have the Reconquista, Reconquista, which is a CBE piety cost reduction, negative 10%, and increase in monthly piety. This is to help us conquer all the Muslim territory in Spain easier. And then we have the Caballeros, which allows us to recruit them as men-at-arms, uh, which you can see that uh, has a little description here for what those are. Uh, Andalusian stallions are better at traveling and fighting rough terrain than other breeds of horses. We can train specialized cavalry regiments, which take advantage of this. It's their mountain calf, basically, or hilly calf. So those are the unique ones that we have for the early medieval age. And this is what we currently have unlocked. So that's why we can recruit those as men-at-arms. We have the arch saddle, letting us get armored horsemen. We have horseshoes, increasing our movement speed. Hereditary rule allows us to enact the partition law, increasing our prestige. This one unlocks uh, economic buildings and reduces construction time. Got the coinage, increasing development growth, and so on, so on, guys. So we're currently working on the communal government. I don't think that's the best one for us, honestly. Probably gonna go with Bayless so that we can get uh, more territory directly under our control. This would be good to get too, though, the battlements. Yeah, it could be a good one for us to get as well. Yeah, let's go ahead and do the, the battlements, guys. I think that one's better for us. So we'll change it up. You can see it's gonna take us 37 years to complete oh, it. Wow. How fast you research is based off of the development of all of the provinces, all of the counties of your culture. So that's how that's determined. All right, let's go back to the assassinations here and see who we can invite to this. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of people willing to join. Apparently, people don't like him. And this guy's going to tick it up quite a bit. Hopefully, he's not too expensive. Oh, he's very expensive. <laughs> like, never mind. We're looking for a bargain murderer. Yeah. <laughs> so, 127 gold here, and he's not that much worse, so he's cheaper. Let's see how much this guy's willing to... That's 137. Take a look at this character. There we go. That's a low <laughs> price. That's pretty cheap. Uh, given it's going to reduce, it's not going to increase it as much as these guys would. But he actually increases the uh, secrecy more. Does it's just it the success if chance. the person doesn't like you? Could they turn on you? I don't think so. I'm not entirely sure if opinion of agents has any effect. All right, so let's go ahead and invite him to the scheme. And we'll see if we have enough money to invite anybody else, because it's clearly not going to be enough, I think. So yeah, we're at 63% and 70, 78%, so that's not going to be enough, guys. So we're going to have to invite at least one more person to the scheme. And yeah, I'm really hoping we're able to be successful here and just take out both of our brothers peacefully. <laughs> we have one more person that's willing to take the amount of money that we have available. That's 55 gold. She's not going to make a huge impact, though. So we might just want to save our money. Get somebody better. Wait till he pisses somebody else off. Yeah. And you know what? If he pisses them off enough, they'll join the scheme uh, willingly on their own. On their own. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. So that's a possibility. Now we don't have a whole lot of uh, time left in the episode. And somebody's taken prisoner. There's all these wars going on right now. We're trying to consolidate our own territory first, guys. Build up our military before we attack anybody. Seems wise. Yeah. So we'll try and take out Leon first. Now, getting this territory over here actually probably changed up our powerful vassals, because we have a duke over there. Uh, so we might want to look if any of these need to be changed up. So, like, we have currently three powerful vassals that are not in the court. And so it would probably be wise to change this up a bit. He hates you. Yeah, he's not happy with us not giving him a position. Oh, that's Negative 40. Also, he didn't like our brother at all. And so we're getting hit by that as well. Since what does that have to do with us? It's the opinion of the predecessor. If <laughs> oh, you inherit the title rather oh, than take gotcha. it, then that affects it. Uh, so, yeah, he's not going to like us no matter what. But we can boost that some. Yeah, but do you want your spy master to hate you? Yeah, you don't want your spy master to hate you, but we wouldn't put him as spy master anyway. We'd put oh, him as I marshal, see. which means we'd remove our, our best friend. Oh, I was looking at the wrong slot. And that would, you know, piss our best friend off, but... We have such high opinion with them that it's not going to have that big of an effect. So I think it'd be wise to switch him out for Duke Nuno. Because he's just too powerful to not put him in a position, I think. So let's go and put him in that position. He's, he's still... He still hates us, guys. 
And as for this position here, we have uh, the two counts, and neither one of them are that great at anything, honestly, so we'll probably keep them out of the council for now. Now yeah, we'll see if we can't get this assassination done. Again, increasing our power and uniting our lands, because currently we're separated. Our two territories are separated. Yeah, unite our, our territory here by taking on our brother. But again, he's got to not have any children at that point. And so they're still betrothed, despite the fact that she's old enough to get married. He's, you uh, have to initiate the marriage, Yeah, dude. yeah, you do. Oh. He's doubting whether or not he wants to, to do this marriage. Yeah, are we <laughs> married then? Uh, well, normally there'd be a little thing that'd pop up, but again, you gotta go in here to actually see it. I don't think she's old enough yet. I thought our wife would, or our future wife was older than... No, oh, she's 14. We've got a while to go. Which is unfortunate that we did pick somebody so young, because, uh... That does result in in us you know, being much older by the time she's of age here. A couple more years, though. I want an eye patch. But, you know, at this point, because we're so much more powerful, I almost don't want to do this marriage. And cast her aside. Yeah, we could. <laughs> It'd piss him off, of course. He's got an eye patch. He's though. got an eye patch, though. Yeah, we could do that if we wanted to. I think we should probably have the alliance, I suppose. Let's all stay united here and... God, I can't get out of this. Uh, here in Spain against against the Muslims. And he can help us take out Navarra, which will be our first military goal, which we will not be able to do in this episode, unfortunately, guys. All right, so we do have a lot of money. And also, I saw that we have the ability to ask her how to pay for gold. This is uh, something you use piety for, and he just gives you money. So let's go so and do that. you just trade that piety for money? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll see up at the top screen, you have your money, your prestige, your piety, and your renown. So yeah, we just traded that. Alright, so with that done, we have a lot more money. And we can try and convince one of these expensive people to come in. Oops. But yeah, I'm not excited about paying them all this money, but <laughs> yeah, we'll have to do the 127. We'll do the cheapest one, guys. How bad do you want them dead? Yeah, this is really important to get done, so we'll bring him on on board and we'll still have some money left nice all right so he did accept and we have an event rest for the weary sweaty tired and in need of food a long day of training with the troops is coming to an end as we search for a place to camp we spot an old and abandoned castle in the distance cracking my knuckles i declare that is where we will make our camp tonight the sun is setting with every step towards the ruin it looks more ominous before long the soldiers are whispering about ghosts all right, so we can say, let us venture inside. I'm sure there's treasure to be found. Or we can say, let us raise the tents outside. It is time to rest. And this will give us some type of modifier for 10 years. A 2 plus advantage in combat. You want to go for the treasure, Jinx? I mean, I do want treasure, but your men are scared. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for the treasure. Let's see what happens. So darkness, dampness, and desolation rain out inside the castle, and all traces of life are gone. Peering up decaying stairs, I spot what might be the remnants of lush tapestries and old paintings. Looking down spiraling steps, I see only darkness reaching far down to the ground underneath the castle. So we can search the upper floors. Uh, this is a stewardship challenge. So 50% chance we gain 130 gold, 50% chance we gain 35 gold. Or we can go with what might be hidden in the darkness underneath, a 99% chance that we're going to face our fears. A 0% chance that we'll, we'll not be able to do it. And the reason for that, I think, is our, maybe our prowess or being brave or something. So I'm going to see what this gives us. A 1 plus prowess and a reduction to stress gain. I don't know. I guess we can go with the prowess. Is that what you want to do? It's a 99% chance. So we're definitely going to succeed here. So yeah, we'll go with that. Increasing our prowess, which is now sitting at... 9. So very, very low prowls. We're not very good in combat, guys. That agent did join. Thus, we now have a 95% chance of success and secrecy. And that's probably where we're going to end it. Uh, though we do need to get some more men-at-arms. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's build something. Something for some money or what do we currently have here? So we already have the hamlets. Level 2 hamlets increasing our money and our holding taxes. So these are all the different buildings we can get. We could also work on a duchy building. 
though we don't have enough money for that just yet. Also, this take longer to, to construct. I'm almost thinking the walls and towers, increasing our fort level and our, our taxes. I think that's what we're going to get here, guys. Since this is the capital, and, and they always go after the capital. That's the first building I constructed. In my little test, I didn't, I didn't construct any buildings. I kind of wanted to focus on the warfare, so I was just building men-at-arms. Because I didn't know how well the warfare was going to play in this game. <laughs> Our scheme was discovered. No. Damn it. Yeah, that's very unfortunate, guys. Alright, so it's not impossible to complete it at this point. But it's very unlikely. But it's yeah. a 20% chance of success, 35% chance of secrecy. Secrecy doesn't matter because it's already discovered. I mean, I guess it matters whether you get discovered when you uh, assassinate them. We can still get other people to join to try and increase that. We spent so much money on it. I almost feel like we should just wait till we get more money. Yeah, I think we're going to do this anyway, guys. We're earning good money right now per month. And so, like, let's say we get that guy that costs 137 which is only one month away from from, from getting that that amount then maybe that'll be enough I don't know <laughs> you might have to hire them both yeah. honestly uh, so this is him here 137 I don't know how much that'll make impact you're getting a, a lot of territory for this so it's a pretty important assassination I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. 52 and 67. So if we can hire that one other guy, which was 147. Got? Oh, jeez. Man, we had an agent discovered, so we just lost that agent. Damn. All right, so that's going to impact us. And one of our knights became a blade master as well. It's still 42. Oh, so never mind. So is she going to squeal? Well, it's already known. The plot's already known, so... Yeah, but is our involvement known? I don't know. Because it said that it wasn't yet. But. I think that can only. I think your involvement is only discovered when you do the assassination. Oh, I see. So the the secrecy would impact that. Uh, but yeah, the uh, you can kind of hover over this real quick, see if it'll let us know. Yeah, exposed. This scheme has been exposed, and existence is known to the target. Just makes it more difficult to do it. Yeah, we'll have to. Unfortunately, we'll have to do it next next episode, guys, because uh, this one is over. And uh, man, I don't, I don't know if we're gonna be able to complete it since we just lost so. that agent. But if we cancel it, then we can't do it at all. Not for another ten years, I think. So by then he'll, he'll have a baby. yeah he'll have children. So we'd have to fight him in war, which we'd be able to beat him that way. Uh, we have more troops than him, especially once we build up our men at arms. It's probably better to just use the money for men at arms. And uh, try and increase our overall military power. So we will have to end today's episode here. So far, everything's going well. I mean, other than this this plot being revealed, and of course the faction issue that we had. It was a, a real shame that that faction fired before we inherited all this, because we would have been able to easily deal with that faction if we had had this territory when they uh, gave us that ultimatum. So that's kind of a shame. Uh, it did reduce our our uh, crown authority, but we'll be able to put it back up here. And, uh, you know, less than 20 years. I think it's about 18 years. So we'll put it back up. And uh, other than that, and this uh, plot being revealed, I think it's gone pretty well for our first episode. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Uh, if you're looking for anything to watch, and check out the front page of our channel. We have 3,000 up videos all sorted by genre. Do play a wide variety of games, including quite a bit of strategy, uh, this is a Paradox interactive game, and they have a uh, several different types of, of uh, strategy games, uh, one for like each time period. And I do play uh, a lot of those. We played uh, EU4, which is for the early modern period. Play a lot of Hearts of Iron 4. It's probably the game I play the most, and that's a uh, World War II strategy game from Paradox. Then there's Imperator Rome. Then a couple of those series. That's for the uh, antiquity. And then there's Stellaris, which is a... Uh, uh, sci-fi 4x kind of strategy game and if you're looking for the ck3 series we do have three of those on pc jinx is not on those unfortunately i need to play those uh, by myself and that's of course uh, england the byzantine empire and then the the current one in poland uh, and that also shows the polish one shows the new royal court dlc so if you want to check out those new features they're pretty cool and those are supposed to be coming to console eventually as well and i think you can get access to them uh, with the uh, expansion pass 
if you pay however much extra that is, then they'll give you the uh, first two expansions, uh, a clothing pack, and then there's supposed to be a third one that's going to get announced, and you'll get that one as well. So you should be able to find something to watch while you wait for the next episode. If you're looking for any links, check out the description of any of our videos. We've got links to our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store if you'd like to help support the channel. We've got links to all of our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff if you'd like to follow us on there. And then we also got a link to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. And remember on the back end of this video on the end card, there will be a link to the tutorial if you're looking for something that kind of explains how to play the game. Again, it won't uh, be for console, it's for the PC, so it doesn't con cover like the, the console controls. But the mechanics are all essentially the same, so I think it's adequate for, for teaching the game. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll see you on one of those other CK3 videos. And I do hope to see you on episode two of this series, and thanks for watching.